Good morning, everybody. So today I'm going to start with the lecture, the maxillary anesthetic techniques. These are very important for your clinical practice, your day-to-day -day work, and it will help you in all through the your future. So these are the contents of my lecture. First, we will deal with the introduction part, then the supraperiosteal way of the injection, the PSA nerve block, the middle superior alveolar nerve block, the anterior superior alveolar nerve block, the maxillary nerve block, the greater palatine nerve block, the nasopalatine, and the extra oral techniques as well. So what is the objective of my lecture today? So the first of all, the maxillary or the second division nerve block is an effective method of achieving the profound anesthesia of a hemimaxilla. And the anatomy and the techniques associated with this block, as well as the indications, contraindications, and complications are well described here in this PPT. First of all, we deal with the introduction part. In the introduction part, you are seeing here that there are two pictures on the slide. At one picture, which is the red one, there is a topical free nerve endings. Then these free nerve endings join to form the terminal nerve endings where we can give the infiltration and these terminal nerve endings join to form the main trunk, which is known as the nerve block. So whenever we are spraying the local anesthetic solution, we are spraying it on the free nerve endings. And these free nerve endings join to form the terminal nerve endings, where we will give the infiltration. And then when we are giving the nerve block, so we are giving the nerve block in the main trunk of the nerve. And in the first diagram, which is black and white in color, you can able to see that there are the division of the trigeminal nerve and especially the maxillary nerve, okay? We can see the nerve is emerging out from the trigeminal ganglion. We can see the ophthalmic division, which is further dividing into the frontal nerve, the supraorbital, supratrochlear. Then we are having the maxillary nerves, its branches. Now, I will not deal with the anatomy in detail because I feel like you know it and you have learned it previously also. Now, what are the general methods of obtaining the pain control with local anesthetics which are available nowadays? First is the local infiltration. I have discussed it before also. The small terminal nerve endings in the area of the dental treatment are flooded with the local anesthetic solution. Okay, what, and what will be the nerve block? When the local anesthetic solution is deposited close to a main nerve trunk, usually at a distance from the site of the operative intervention. Like there is a difference between the local infiltration and the nerve block. In the local infiltration, what we will do? We will just infiltrate the area nearby where we are going to work. Like if we are going to extract the one one, we have to just give the infiltration and it's near the epices only. But what is the nerve block? If we want the full nerve block, it, the site will be far away from the site in which we are working. Okay, now what will be the field block? Field block, the local anesthetic is deposited near the larger terminal nerve branches. So the anesthetized area will be circumscribed, preventing the passage of the impulses from the tooth to the CNS. Now, uh, maxillary injection techniques. Numerous injection techniques are available to provide clinically adequate anesthesia of the teeth of, and the soft and the hard tissue in the maxilla. As I've told you before, we can give the supraperiosteal or the infiltration, or we can go for the nerve blocks in the maxillary. We are having the posterior superior nerve block, middle superior alveolar nerve block, anterior superior alveolar blo nerve block, and here the maxillary nerve block, the, G, the GP nerve block, the palatine, and the nasopalatine nerve blocks. So two nerve blocks on the palatal side and two or three nerve blocks on the buccal side. Now, first of all, we will deal with the supraperiosteal injection. The supraperiosteal injection, more correctly called as the local infiltration, is the most frequently used technique for obtaining the pulpal anesthesia in the maxillary teeth. 
the areas that is crystallized from this injection will be the entire region innervated by the large terminal branches the pulp and the root area of the tooth the connective tissue and the mucous membrane you can observe in the diagram that we are having the we are going to extract the 2-4 so for 2-4 we need the local infiltration in and around the tissue in and around the tooth Indications when we need the pulp anesthesia of the maxillary teeth when it is limited to one or the two teeth and if your nerve block is not effective and if the patient is having any acute phase of infection. And the soft tissue anesthesia indicated for surgical procedures in a circumscribed area like if you want to do the biopsy and if you want to do something surgical excision in a circumscribed area we will just locally infiltrate that area. Contraindications will be if the infection or acute inflammation is present, there's bone covering the epices of the tooth. The advantages it has in having a very high success rate because we are injecting the solution in and around the tooth. Technically, it is a very easy injection because you don't have to see for the landmarks and usually entirely atraumatic. Disadvantages, it is not recommended for larger areas and in fact also for the extractions also. If you're extracting a mobile teeth, yeah, you can go for the local infiltration. But yeah, if you're going to extract the one aid, two aid or any molars or any tooth, then yeah, surely it will not work out. And alternatives will be the, the regional nerve blocks. Now, what will be the technique? We will take a 27 gauge short needle. Area of the insertion will be the height of the mucobuccal fold as seen in the diagram also. And the syringe should be held parallel to the long axis of the tooth. And it is inserted at the height of the mucobuccal fold over the tooth. Landmarks you can say, yeah, yeah the mucobuccal fold, the crown of the tooth and the root contour of the tooth. Now, why does anesthesia need failure? Because if the needle type lies below the apex along the root of the tooth and if the needle tip lies too far from the bone. So the solution will be deposited only in the buccal soft tissue. Whenever you will try to apply the pressure, what will happen? The patient will have pain and the complications here, yeah, pain or needle insertion. To correct, you can withdraw the needle and reinsert it. Now. Now the PSA nerve block, the posterior superior alveolar nerve block is the very important nerve block. The posterior superior alveolar nerve block is all commonly used dental nerve block. The other common names for this block is the tuberosity block and the zygomatic block. And the nerves anesthetized are the posterior superior alveolar nerve and its branches. Now the areas anesthetized. It is more important to have to learn it by heart. And as if you start doing the cases, you don't, you don't need to just mug it off. You will just understand it and it will come by your gut that, yeah, we have to give this block for this step. Now, areas will be the pulps of the maxillary third, second and first molars. But yeah, in the case of the first molars, the mesiobuccal root is not anesthetized only in the 28% of the cases, okay? But for that 28% of the cases, you need to give the local infiltration for each and every maxillary first molar which you are going to extract, okay? And the buccal periodontium and bone overlying these no. indications. When treatment involves two or more maxillary molars, when you can't give the local infiltration, when supraperiosteal injection has proved ineffective. Contraindication when the risk of hemorrhage is too great and if the patient is hemophilic. Advantages is that it is atraumatic, have a very high success rate and one injection compared with the option of three. Like if you are going to get, go for the local infiltration technique, you have to give one mesial, one distal, one palatal. So the insertion time will be and the in, you have to just inject more and more okay not the disadvantages risk of hematoma hematoma is very very common in the PSA nerve blocks and its technique is somewhat arbitrary because there are no bony landmarks are present during the insertion we will take a 27 gauge short needle 
the area of the insertion will be the height of the mucobuccal fold above the maxillary second molar. The target area will be your posterior, superior, and medial to the posterior border of the maxilla. The landmarks, the mucobuccal fold, the maxillary tuberosity, the zygomatic process of the maxilla, the infratemporal surface of the maxilla. Now, for a left PSA nerve block, a right-handed administrator should sit at the 10 o'clock position, facing the position, okay? And for a right PSA block, a right-handed administrator should sit at an 8 o'clock position facing the patient. If you are not sitting also, then you have to stand at the 8 o'clock position if you are going to strap the tooth of the same side, okay, in the right side. And if you are going to extract the tooth of the opposite side for the left side, then you need to stand at the 10 o'clock position. Now, you can see in the third diagram that there is a angulation of 45 degree when we are injecting the middle insert. So, we can say we have to give the three motions, three movements when we are piercing the middle inside the second molar obliquely. That oblique will be the 45 degree angulation from the occlusal plane. You will do the movement of the inward, outward and Okay, so this will be the your movements. You will just pass your syringe inward, upward, and backward at 45 degree angulation from the occlusal plane of the molars. They are it can there are failures of the anesthesia because if the needle is too lateral. If the needle is high enough and if the needle is far posterior, if the needle is fast posterior, then you can hold the, the plexus and the hematoma can occur. Hematoma is very, very common. You can see in the complications also I have written that this is a commonly produced by inserting the needle too far posteriorly and it will pierce the pterygoid plexus of the vein. And yeah, sometimes the mandibular anesthesia also occurs if your if your needle in, is not at the 45 degree angulation. No. Now the middle superior alveolar nerve block. The middle superior alveolar nerve block is only present in the 28% of the population. That is, I have just told you in the previous slide that the first molar. The mesiobuccal root of the first molar is not supplied by the posterior superior alveolar nerve block in 28% of the population. So in on that 28% of the population, their mesiobuccal root is being supplied by the middle superior alveolar nerve. So we have to give this block for that nerve, for that root, if we are going to extract the six. But yeah, if we are going to extract the seven or the eight, the second molar or the third molar, then we don't need this block. The PSA will block. Now the areas anesthetized will be the pulps of the maxillary first and the second premolars, the mesiobuccal root of the first molar, the buccal periodontal tissues and bone over these same teeth. Now, indications. Whenever the, your anterior superior nerve block fails to provide the pulpal anesthesia distal to the maxillary canine, and if the dental procedures involving both maxillary premolars only, like if you if you only want to extract the premolars, then yeah, you can go for this block. The contraindications again the infection or the inflammation in the area of the injection, and where the MSA nerve is absent. Yeah, you cannot come to know that how the MSA nerve is absent. Now the advantage is you have to minimize the numbers of the injection and the volume of the solutions and alternatives are the local infiltration and anterior superior alveolar nerve block. Now the technique, again we will take a 27 gauge short needle or yeah, you can take the long needle also. The area of the insertion will be the height of the mucobuccal fold above the maxillary second premolar. And the target area will be the maxillary bone above the apex of the maxillary second premolar. 
landmark again the mucobuccal fold above the maxillary second male molar so what we have to do we have to just insert the needle in the mucobuccal fold present above the crown of the maxillary second premolar again the positions will will be somewhat the same for a right side block now you need to come at the 10 o'clock position for PSA for a right you need to come at the 8 o'clock position okay and for the left here you have to come for at the 8 o'clock position but for the PSA you have to go for a 10 o'clock position now what can be the failures of the anesthesia anesthetic solution should not be deposited high above the apex of the second premolar and if the deposition of solution is too far from the maxillary bone because if the needle will be placed at the lateral to the height of the mucobuccal fold, then it will occur surely. Complications here, hematoma can develop. Now we come to anterior superior alveolar nerve block, the infraorbital nerve block. Again, the second most common nerve block for the maxillary teeth, the ASA nerve block does not enjoy the popularity of the PSA because there is a general, okay. Its other common name is infraorbital nerve block. It is very technique sensitive. You have to first palpate the infraorbital foramen and then you have to give the block and the nerves anesthetized are the all. The anterior superior alveolar nerve, the middle superior alveolar nerve, infraorbital nerve which is again divided into the inferior palpebral, lateral nasal and superior labial. So we can see whenever you will give the infraorbital nerve block, you will ask the patient for the numbness in the lower palpebral area, the lateral nasal area and the upper lip area. Okay. Yeah, so we were at uh, the anterior superior nerve block. I have just told you. Now, the areas anesthetized will be the pulps of the. You are not able to see this. Okay, okay, yeah. So, areas anesthetized will be the pulps of the maxillary central incisor through the canine on the injected site, like from the central incisor to the premolar and yeah the mesiobuccal root of the first molar also. But as I have told you again and again, in about 72% of the patients, pulps of the maxillary premolars and the mesiobuccal root of the first molar is not involved. Now, the buccal and the labial periodontium and bone of these same teeth. Lower eyelid, lateral aspect of the nose and the upper lip, the indications will be Dental procedures involving more than two maxillary teeth and their overlying buccal tissues, inflammation or infection, which contraindicates the supraperiosteal injection. The supraperiosteal injections have been ineffective because of the dense cortical bone. There are various alternatives, the local infiltration, and for each and every tooth, infiltration of the prodontion, and the last one is the maxillary nerve block. The contraindications that if the area is very discreet and if hemostasis of the localized area when desirable cannot be adequately achieved. Now what will be the technique? The technique will be again they will need a 27 gauge long needle. Although the 27 gauge short also can be used. The area of the insertion will be the height of the mucobuccal fold directly over the first premolar. You have to target the infraorbital foramen. The landmarks will be your, the mucobuccal fold, the infraorbital knots, the infraorbital foramen, 
Now you will first you have to palpate the supraorbital nodes, the infraorbital nodes. Then just pass your thumb down, down. You will have the infraorbital depression. In that depression, you have to just press the thumb extra orally and from your index finger just reflect the left as that in the diagram the doctor is doing and from right hand you have these things you have to do with the left hand and from the right hand you have to just pass the needle and you will feel the needle just below your thumb <clears throat> and you can inject the solution there so for a right or left intravital nerve block a right-handed administrator should sit at the 10 o'clock position, directly facing the patient or facing in the same direction. Position the patient supine or semi-supine with the neck extended slightly. Now, I have just told you that how to locate the infraorbital foramen. Feel the infraorbital notch, move your finger downwards. From the notch, applying gentle pressure to the tissues and the bone immediately inferior to the notch is convex. It will be felt as an outward bulge. This represents the lower bulger of the orbit and the roof of the infraorbital foramen. And as your finger will continue inferiorly, you will feel a concavity. That concavity is the infraorbital foramen. The point of contact should be the upper rim of the infraorbital foramen. The general depth of the needle penetration is 16 mm for an adult of average height, equivalent to the half the length of a long needle. Okay, and the depth of the penetration varies. A pre-injection of approximation of the depth of the penetration can be made by placing one finger on the infraorbital foramen and another on the injection site on the mucobuccal port. Now the, again, the failures, if we come to the failure, and if the needle is contacting the bone below to the infraorbital foramen, the needle deviation medial or lateral to the infraorbital foramen, the complications, yeah, hematoma may develop across the lower eyelid and the tissues between it. To manage, you have to just apply the pressure on the soft tissue over the foramen for next two to three minutes. Now we comes to the palatal anesthesia. We have now just deal with the anesthesia on the buccal side. Okay, we have learned about the PSA nerve block, the MSA nerve block, the ASA or the infrabital nerve block. Now how we will anesthetize the roots which are present on the palatal side. Anesthesia of the hard palate is necessary for dental procedures involving the manipulation of the palatal soft or the hard tissues. For many dental patients, palatal injections prove to be a very traumatic experience. And the steps in the atraumatic administration will be first just provide the topical anesthesia at the loop site of the needle penetration. Use the pressure anesthesia at the site both before and during the needle insertion. Maintain the control over the needle and deposit the anesthetic solution very slowly. Now the greater palatine nerve block. The greater palatine nerve block is very useful for dental procedures. It involves the palatal soft tissues which are present distal to the canine. That means for all the posterior teeth, for all the palatal roots of the premolars and the molars, we have to give the greater palatine nerve block. And the nerve anesthetized from this block is the greater palatine nerve. The posterior portion of the hard palate and its overlying soft tissues, anteriorly as far as the first premolar are the areas anesthetized. Indications again, if we want to extract or if we want to do any endo treatment for the molars or the premolars and for pain control during any oral surgical procedure, alternatives, you can give the local infiltration or if you can give the maxillary nerve block. Now, what will be the technique? We use a 27 gauge short needle and the area of insertion will be the soft tissue slightly anterior to the greater palatine foramen. The target area will be greater palatine nerve as it passes anteriorly between the soft tissues and the bone of the hard palate. The landmarks will be greater palatine foramen and junction of the maxillary alveolar process and the palatine bone. So we have to give 
it at the junction of the maxillary alveolar process and the palatine bone. Just distal to the second molar, we have to just give the solution. Now, again, for a right palatine nerve block, you have to be at seven or eight position. And if you are giving a left to the palatine block, then you have to be on the 11 o'clock position. Now, place a cotton swab, just give a local uh, spray or topical anesthesia at the area, rub your finger there, and there will be a depression at that area where the junction of the alveolar process of the maxilla and the palatine bone is there. The foramen is located just distal to the maxillary second molar. Now you can see we are giving the uh, GPA. No. What will be the failures of the anesthesia? If local anesthetic is deposited too far anterior to the foramen, adequate soft tissue anesthesia may not occur. And if anesthesia on the palate in the area of the maxillary first premolar may prove inadequate because of the overlapping fibers from the nasopalatine nerve. Complications are few of significance, ischemia or necrosis can occur. Hematoma is very, very rare. Now, this is for the posterior tooth. Now, we need some anesthesia technique for the anterior tooth also. That is the nasopalatine nerve block. Okay, the other common names are the incisive nerve block or the sphenopalatine nerve block. The nerves anesthetized are the nasopalatine nerves bilaterally. And the areas anesthetized are the anterior portion of the heart palate bilaterally from the mesial of the right first premolar to the mesial of the left first premolar. Alternatives are we can give the local infiltration and yeah, we can go for the maxillary nerve block. Indications. When we need the palpable anesthesia for the maxillary anterior tooth, the contraindications, if there is inflammation or infection is present, we can use a 27 gauge short needle and the area of insertion will be the palatal mucosa, just later to the incisive papilla, okay? It, we will give it in the midline behind the central incisor. You can see in the diagram the area of insertion. The target area will be the incisive foramen beneath the incisive papilla and the landmarks are only the central incisors and the incisive papilla. Position of the administrator will be just at the 11 o'clock position if you are giving the nasopalatine nerve block. Again, we have to do the, do the same. Just apply a local anesthetic solution. You can either spray or you can apply it from a swab and then you have to just inject it. Now, what can be the failures of anesthesia? If the solution is deposited to one side of the incisive canal, so what happened, the, ude the unilateral anesthesia may develop. To correct it, just reinsert the needle into the already anesthetized tissue and re-inject the solution into the unanesthetized area. Complications, hematoma is possible, but again, the, it is very rare because of the firm adherence of the palatal tissues to the bone. Necrosis of the soft tissue is possible when highly concentrated. Because of the density of the soft tissue, anesthetic solution may squirt back. Like in the first slide I have told you for the palatal nerve block, we have to, what we have to, we have to just slowly inject the solution. If we will not slowly inject, what will happen? The solution will squirt back out of the middle. Now, yeah, we can go for the local infiltration of the palate also. This is the maxillary nerve block. The maxillary nerve block is an effective method of achieving the profound anesthesia of the hemimaxilla and the nerve, the whole maxillary nerve, division of the trigeminal nerve, the areas, all the buccal, the pulpal periodontium, the soft tissue with the lower eyelid, side of the nose, cheek and upper lip are anesthetized by this nerve block. We will do it when we are going to do for the extensive surgical procedure like for the hemimaxillectomy procedures or any reconstructive or any seasonal procedures. 
The technique is known as the high tuberosity approach in which a 27 gauge short nut, the long needle is used. Okay, the area of insertion will be the height of the mucobuccal cord above the distal part of the maxillary second molar. The target area will be the maxillary nerve as it passes through the pterygopalatine fossa. As you can see in the diagram, when the needle is going into the pterygopalatine fossa, superior and medial to the target area of the superior and medial to the target area where we give the posterior spray as a nerve block. The landmarks will be a mucobuccal fold at the distal aspect of the maxillary second molar, the maxillary tuberosity, the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Here we can go with the rotopalatine canal approach also, like that was the high tuberosity approach. The other approach is the greater palatine canal approach. In it, a 25 gauge long needle is recommended. The area of the insertion are just the palatal soft tissue directly over the glutal palatine foramen. The target area as the maxillary nerve passes through the terrible palatine fossa, the needle passes through the glutal palatine canal to reach that fossa. So the landmark will be again the glutal palatine foramen, which is at the junction of the alveolar fossa and the palatine. We the failures can be, you can achieve only the partial anesthesia and inability to negotiate the greater blood tank canal because it is very high sensitive complications. Hematoma develops very rapidly if you puncture the maxillary artery during the maxillary nerve block via the high tuberosity approach. And penetration of the orbit may occur if you are going for the greater blood tank foramen. These are the recommendations for the volume for which block you need how much volume. Again, we are having the external techniques also like the external infrabital nerve block, the external ma maxillary nerve block. And we do it if, if there is any infection, pathology, trismus or trauma, patient is not able to open the mouth and we have to give the block. I just want to show you a video. Yeah. The blocks. So these are the maxillary injection techniques and these injections are used to anesthetize the maxillary teeth, soft and the hard tissue according to the melamed. He is the melamed. No, again, the techniques are the same, which I have told you, the infiltration, the posterior superalveolar nerve block, the middle superalveolar nerve block, anterior superior alveolar nerve block, the greater palatine nerve block, the nasopalatine nerve block, the second division, the maxillary nerve block, and the 